So in January this year, my business crossed six figures for the first time, but within about two months, I was more stressed and more unhappy than I've ever been uh, since starting my business. And the most frustrating thing about this was that I'd fallen into a couple of really, really obvious traps that I thought I never would or could fall into. And it's ultimately culminated with the decision that I am closing my script writing agency after less than three months of running it. And in this video, I wanna talk about why, uh, talk about what's happened partly for the people who had expressed interest in the agency, but also because I was just so surprised at how easily I'd fallen into these little traps. Uh, and I think they are traps that kind of loom before a lot of people in this internet business thing, uh, online entrepreneurs, solopreneurs, YouTubers, um, any any of that kind of thing. So let's talk about it. And ironically, this is not a scripted video. I've got some, some notes here, uh, but I kind of want this to be like a free flowing conversation. And also I'm very out of practice on camera. And so trying to teleprompt this would be a nightmare. So we're gonna just go like this and um, yeah, let, let's talk about it. So to start off, why I started the agency. Let, let's talk about that and uh, kind of, you know, clue you in on how things started to unravel, <laughs> basically. Um, so I had wanted to start an agency kinda for a while. Uh, for me, like, you know, I started out in this thing as just a freelance, well, a full-time script writer initially. And then when I went freelance, it was like, you know, uh, I would just write scripts per client, um, try and write a couple a week if I could. But ultimately that was my limit. You can only do so many scripts in a week, at least if the client cares about quality because they take time and they take thought and they take effort, they take creativity, etc. cetera. Um, and, but as my presence had started to grow on Twitter and all of that, the number of inbound uh, leads that I was getting were increasing and increasing. And it felt to me like, okay, there's an opportunity here because I am unable to service the demand that there is uh, and I'm leaving money on the table. So like, what's the solution? And the agency kind of presented itself as the the natural solution to that. So that was, that was in theory, the goal was to scale my impact as like buzzwordy and common as that is. Uh, that's what I wanted to do. But to be completely transparent, and I think this is something that people in this space should be more transparent about because I suspect it plays more of a role than people are often willing to admit. But I, of all the projects that I have started in this business, the agency was by a mile the most money focused thing that I have ever done. Yes, the scaling and the impact and all of that stuff was there because like this is a problem I've been wanting to solve for ages and you know, how do you solve it? I guess an agency is, is the way. Um, but the dollar signs were hanging over my eyes in a way that they hadn't done with anything else because I've got friends that run agencies and we see people on Twitter sharing how much money they make from their agencies. And you know, who wouldn't think, ah, I could get to a point where I'm running an agency that does $100,000 a month and where I barely have to like put any work into it because I've like outsourced everything and whatever else. That sounds pretty good uh, to, to most people and it sounded good to me. And we had the demand, like I knew that as soon as we set it up, we had a you know a big waiting list. The first few clients that we got in for our launch, like we had some like big, big creator economy industry names in there. Uh, and most importantly, and this is what I wanna stress throughout this video, is that the writers I got were just so good. They were so, I, I was so lucky with, with who I got in my, you know, this first round. Uh, we had like, a, you know, over a hundred applications. I got five people in initially. Uh, but there were a few more people on the list who I was like kind of earmarked as, oh, they, they could be like pretty good. And, you know, when we need to expand, we'll we'll talk to them. And But anyway, these, these first five people that I got were just, you know, were, were brilliant. And they had a really already a good understanding of YouTube, but they were super responsive. They're timely, um, just really, really easy to work with. And so nothing about the like... Uh, nuts and bolts of running this thing was a problem. Um, you know, I couldn't have been luckier with the writers that I got and and the clients that we got to start off with. Um, but then I started to notice something. Uh, and I think this relates to this like, not money first, I don't know if money first approach is the wrong way to phrase it, but like a, uh, you know, a money weighted <laughs> approach to uh, running this thing was that I started to get the Sunday scaries back. 
And for anyone who, I mean, if you don't know what it means, you've certainly experienced it. And it's that thing where on a Sunday, you just, all you can think about is work on a Monday because you're sort of dreading it. And it absorbs any joy that you should be getting from your weekend, particularly on Sunday, because it's all you can think about is that, oh, I've got to get up tomorrow and I've got to go to work and whatever else. And I was feeling that. And I haven't felt that since I had a normal job um, a long time ago. And I've been, I feel like so privileged to have not been feeling that. Uh, and yet it was coming back. And it was for a job that I had created for myself. Um, and there were a few other little things that started to kind of, um, that I started to realize weren't, weren't quite right. Like there was an occasion I was uh, with my girlfriend, Julia, and her mum. And um, Julia's mum was like driving us from her house to my parents' house because my parents live very nearby. And I was so convinced, I was so like I, you know, in this kind of work mode where I'm like, I'm busy, I'm a stressed agency owner, I can't stop, that I wouldn't stop working even for the like the short journey from Julia's mum's house to my parents' house. And it's 20 minutes. But I was convinced that I don't have time for a 20 minute break in the middle of the day. And so I sat in the back of the car like this little horrible work obsessed gremlin just refusing to stop work well not refusing it's not like they had to drag me into the car or out of it um but you know i was it just wasn't a mindset that i wanted to be in and i feel like i you know i've i'm i try not to be a rude person ever but i was definitely you know bordering on if not straying into just being just like a, a rude little self-obsessed gremlin boy uh <laughs> and uh and that's not good and you know then these other thoughts start to come in and i don't know if anyone in this space who's kind of like you know you're, you're building all these things you've got all these projects going at once and occasionally you start to think wait, wait, wait how, how do i um how do i take holiday like how do i do that how do i ensure that when i go away with my family in the future i don't have to be like just i just need to check the laptop this evening because that's what i did i was on holiday with my my parents and my girlfriend in uh January and, and actually with my friends as well and it was you know we'd we'd go skiing in the day which was like great and then in the evening it would be like no I need to work I need to I need to check my laptop I need to review some scripts I need to whatever else and this picture of what my life was was going to become and was already becoming was kind of laid out before me and it didn't look good and it came to a head last Friday this time last week I'm recording this on a Friday when I, I'd gotten up early to try and get some work done and uh, my girlfriend Julia takes Fridays off. Uh, she's also, you know, self-employed, uh, has control of her schedule, etc. And she takes Fridays off. I'd gotten up early and she came down, you know, a couple of hours after I'd gotten up like stupidly early to do some work. And it was really sunny outside and I had more deadlines than I think I'd ever had for that Friday. Um, and again, this is not because of the writers, like, as I say, all super timely, super talented. It's purely the number of things I was having to oversee. And I knew that, like, I couldn't, I, I am miles off being able to even to take a day off, let alone even being able to go out for, you know, just like a nice coffee uh, on a sunny day to enjoy some time with her, or, you know, on my day off. And I, yeah, looked outside, looked at the sun, uh, and I just thought, like, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Um, I'm stressed, I'm unhappy, um, and I, you know, the business did six figures without this. Like, I didn't, I don't need to be doing this to make a really, really, like, unbelievable living. And, um, and so, yeah, we talked about it, and I verbalized these things, and within, like, half an hour, it was like, yeah, I, I need to... I need to cut this off because, you know, I, I'm very fortunate that I've had very good mental health my whole life. For whatever reason, not gonna, like speculate on on why but like i'm very lucky in that regard and i know not not everyone is that lucky uh but the result of that is it's kind of easier to spot when it's not so good and i think in that moment all these kind of revelations started hitting me and i was like i was a you know choice of swear words here in the back of your mum's car the other day and i i was a bit stressed on holiday when i should have been relaxing and i can't go out for a nice you know lunchtime coffee with you on your day off because I'm busy agency owner boy and I don't have time to stop and it just it was it, it started to become stupid um and so I made the decision but then comes all these things that uh 
the kind of byproducts of these decisions that we make when we're running a business. And for anyone who has ever like tried and failed at a thing, um, you, you'll you probably recognize that, that kind of worry of like, hey, what are people gonna think of me? We're so public with everything that we do on Twitter and YouTube and anything where we're like sticking a camera in our faces and talking or just like being super open about how our business is doing and what its turnover is and margins and like all of this stuff and expenses and blah, blah, blah. Um, I know other uh, economic words. Um, it starts to, uh, you start to think like people are judging me and they're watching every move that I make. And if I admit that this project wasn't for me, that I wasn't cut out for it, what are people gonna think? Is that gonna impact my personal brand? What about my reputation? Um, and then the other side of it is I've got these five brilliant writers who uh, have done nothing but good work for me. And I'm gonna have to tell them that this thing that you know, I got them on board for, got them excited about, I hope maybe um, I can't deliver on anymore. Caveat at this point, like if you, I'm figuring out that, you know, the best way to, to do this, um, but the five people that I hired, you know, I stand by everything that they've done. I vouch for them 100%. I stake my my reputation on them uh, going forwards. You know, I'm already putting them in touch with people that I know are in need of writers um, and I'm doing anything I can for them to help keep this part of their careers going because uh you know they've all been brilliant um but yeah those conversations had to happen and they were all extremely gracious on those uh those calls i was expecting a lot of pushback um you know i i've been let go from things or from a thing in the past and uh i just remember how i felt and it's not quite the same because it you know it wasn't they weren't contracted but i was just determined to try and do this right um, because I didn't want them to feel how I remember feeling, um, you know, when, when a similar thing had happened to me in the past. And they, they were just so gracious about it, as were all the clients. You know, everyone, everyone who's concerned has now been told about this. Um, so ultimately, like, those extra fears that start to come in, they don't matter in comparison to how you're feeling and in terms of your mental health and in terms of just being able to like if you have the freedom to build a business in the way you want to build it why build it in this like bizarre tangential direction just to make a little bit more money or maybe even a lot more money but if you're miserable every day what's the point um and that's kind of the the point that i i came to and all this to say the problem I think we have in this portion of the internet, whether it's like the kind of the Twitter sphere or the YouTube sphere, the entrepreneurial thing where everything is being, you know, shared very openly online is that the scale that we are operating within is so vast. And the people at the far end of that scale who are making stupid amounts of money are so far on that end of the scale that it makes us feel like we're not necessarily doing that well if we only make six figures in a year. And I was falling into that trap where I was like, oh, this person sold their business for a hundred million. Maybe one day I'll scale my agency and I can sell that for a million pounds or, or like what, all this like dumb stuff. Um, and I just like zoomed out for a second and I started to think, I, th the business in the last year has done, has made more money than I ever, ever dreamed that I would make from any job in my life. I had fallen into this trap where every year I thought I wanted to make more and make more and do better. And I came to this realization that I thought, if I only made what I've made this year forever, that would be like bizarre. I feel kind of guilty and like icky about this fact that, you know, I started to think like, oh yeah, well, six figures this year, but next year it's gotta be multi six figures and we've gotta, we've gotta scale our agency as big as possible and we've gotta be known as, uh, you know, like we've got to have this or that reputation and just all this stupid stuff that just doesn't matter. And um, I said at the start about this idea of like falling into uh, these traps. And one of those things was like the, the money doesn't equal happiness thing. And what I'm interested in is that like, I knew this, I've been told this, we've all heard the like $76,000 a year figure, or maybe it's pounds, it might be pounds. Uh, it might be a few more dollars than that but that figure above which happiness supposedly tapers off. And I know there's like debate about that and maybe it's actually you need to make a uh, hundred grand for your happiness level to completely plateau and you know, whatever it is. But like I knew this stuff and yet I was convinced that I was the exception to the rule 
and that I would need to just keep, like I can push this a bit more and I can do these other things in my business and I can make more and I can make more and I can make more. And um, I wonder if it takes overstepping that line, pushing yourself too far and seeing the result of like trying to make more money at the expense of your own happiness before you actually let that lesson sink in. Because for me, the lesson did not sink in until I'd experienced it, which I think is really frustrating and really annoying because like, you know, I'm here now talking about all this and people receiving this, I hope uh, if you haven't experienced that kind of, that turning point of realizing uh, when you do focus on money above happiness and then you feel the repercussions of that, um, I, I, is there a way to like internalize that lesson without having to actually experience it first? I don't know, but that's certainly where I was at. Like I knew this stuff and uh, and I still I still let it happen. And much the same with the lesson around like, you know, be careful. You don't want to create a job for yourself that you then hate. And I did exactly that. And I knew like, I knew this lesson. And I was thinking like, yeah, I've, I'm aware of this, but I'm not going to let that happen because I'm going to be a happy, rich, successful agency owner uh, with this army of writers who are going to, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's just so stupid and I am so pleased that I've had this revelation and we were at this point where it was like either we scale this thing or I stop um, and this is the thing there's like we had people on the waiting list who would have been pretty good testimonials for the business and it, all these like little things of prestige and whatever start to like filter into your brain it's like but if you give this up then you're never going to get that testimonial from these people that are really really well respected and uh whatever else and ultimately you're like yeah but i'm miserable every day so why would i do it um and the the relief like this this is my wall of madness that i kind of developed to try and make sense of my life and like half the stuff on this wall can now be taken off because i've taken that stuff off my plate um and so anyway i'm, I'm starting to ramble now i appreciate if you've listened this long but ultimately, I think the big lesson for me uh, in all of this is like being honest with yourself and like recognizing the feelings that you're having about something and and not thinking, oh, but maybe I'm the exception to the rule. Maybe if I just push through this feeling, uh, eventually everything will be fine. There's an argument to be made for that, right? That you need to be uncomfortable for a while. And there's that kind of grind that comes at the start of any new project. And I'm not denying that. But I think there is a really subtle distinction that we need to learn to make between like, I'm uncomfortable, but this is my goal and it's worth it. And I'm uncomfortable and I hate this and I can never see myself enjoying it. And I was in that camp. This is the other thing, right? I'm, I'm really going off on one now. Thanks for, thanks for chilling with me. I hope you've got yourself a nice cup of tea or coffee. Let's, let's take a sip, let's take a breather. But the most grimly amusing thing about this for me was that I, we, so I, I have a podcast with my friends, Jamie and Gwillem. It's called Making It. You should go and check it out where we talk, uh, you know, all things creator economy as like behind the scenes people. And we recorded loads and loads of episodes before we started uploading them. And at the time that I started my agency, an episode that we'd recorded like three months earlier came out in which I'm saying, I don't want to run an agency. I think it will be very managerial. I think it will be very admin heavy. I think I will lose all the creative elements that make me excited to get up and go to work. Um, and so while I was in the process of launching this agency, my three months ago self was literally holding up a mirror to my face and being like, dude, you don't want to do this. And I knew it beforehand. And yet the money and the prestige and all of that just kind of kicked in. And I did it anyway. And I hated it. <laughs> and uh, so now I'm closing it. Um, so yeah, the, these take some lessons from this if you can. But I think the main thing is just self-reflecting, being honest with yourself, thinking about what is what is the life that I actually want to build for myself. Uh, and for me, it's going out for a coffee uh, with my girlfriend on a Friday at lunchtime when I should be working because I have bought myself back my own time essentially. Uh, and you know, it's being present when I'm with my family members and it's making more time for friends. Um, like I, you know, I, I'm in a comedy double act and I haven't written anything for that in months because I'm like, I'm too busy. And that's another huge, like valuable part of my life, which I feel like I've been neglecting. Ollie, if you're watching, I mean, we've spoken about this anyway, but thank you for writing all of our stuff 
for the last six months and for keeping the TikTok going. Um, I also have TikTok with Ollie. Um, and so all of these little things, what are your priorities? What is it that you actually want your life to look like? Uh, I appreciate that it's not always possible to bend everything to the exact shape that you want it. But ultimately, if you are starting to hate what you're doing, uh, if it's feasible, you should stop doing it. And if you have the flexibility to do that, uh, then there's no time like the present. And I'm so much happier than I was a few days ago. Um, and in fact, to, to end this video, you may lose uh, what I'm saying because my mic is here. We're gonna do a ceremonial wall of madness destruction. Okay. This, all agency, gone. Gone. Gone, 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 gone. Gone, 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 gone. Yes, all of this, gone. <laughs> oh. So, thank you for watching, uh, and good luck with whatever you're doing. I'll speak to you soon.